subtract rational expressions, fractions, that don't have common denominators. And let's talk about finding that least common denominator along the way. So first of all, a fraction that just has um, numerical values in their denominators. The least common denominator between a 16 and a 24 is the number 48. So I'm going to write that over here. And I also would like to illustrate, in case you cannot find that value quickly for yourself, I want to illustrate using prime factors how to find that 48 because it will help us with algebraic expressions. We have to factor their denominators to find the least common denominator. So that's why I'm going to go about that. I think I'm going to do it right underneath these denominators and then I'm going to erase that. So when I write a number as its prime factors, I always start with the number 2 and I ask myself, does 2 go into 16? Yuck, 8 times. And I keep using a 2 until I can't anymore, then I jump to the 3. And 2 goes into 8, 4 times. And then finally, 2 goes into 4, 2 times. And so the factored form of the number 16 is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. So while I know 3 times 8 is 24, I tend to go with 2 times 12 so that I don't miss any prime factors. And again, I say, oh, 2 goes into there 6 times. And oh, yeah, 2 goes into there 3 times. And the factored form of the number um, 24 is this 2 times 2 times 3. And the factored form of the number 16 is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. To find a least common denominator, you take any factors that are common in each of those, the greatest number of times they occur in any one denominator. So the twos occur here four times, and the twos occur here three times. So my least common denominator has to be two times two times two times two. I have to take four of them. Three occurs here once. It doesn't occur here at all. But once is the greatest number of times. And so 3 has to be included in my least common denominator. And the product of all those numbers is 48. Let's go ahead then and let's talk about how you go ahead and get these common denominators in these fractions. So I'm going to give myself a little bit of room. And I'm going to be relatively formal about this. I'm going to say to myself that I want that 16 in this fraction to become a 48. And I know that it's got to be multiplied by a 3 for it to become a 48. Well, then I better multiply the top of this fraction by 3 as well because I want to be multiplying by the number 1 because that doesn't change the value of this fraction. It just writes the fraction in an equivalent form, but it won't be a reduced form. You have to now call this 9x over 48. Whatever you do, don't notice that 3 goes into each of those equally and try to reduce it. You just multiplied it by 3, top and bottom. Don't reduce it at this point. It will always be something that is not reduced. The next fraction, the 7x squared over 24. Its denominator needs to become a 48. So I need to multiply that denominator by a 2 for it to become a 48, and therefore the numerator. And so this is the part that people sometimes make a mistake with. That is going to be 14x squared over that 48. Don't reduce it. You are ready to add now and take those numerators and put those, those terms together. They are not like terms. I'm going to put the 14x squared first and then the 9x over the common denominator of 48. And I'm done because there is nothing other than an x that I can factor out of those numerators, and there are no x's downstairs to reduce with it, so it doesn't, I don't need to bother. This, has, um, this is an even number. This only has factors of 3 and 9, not in the 14. So again, I'm all done. I've added um, those two fractions. Sometimes people will take a shortcut in this process. I don't think I'll show you that shortcut quite yet. So I'm going to kind of illustrate this a little bit real carefully first. So let's add these two fractions. 5 over 3x squared plus 7 over 12x. So they're not binomials or trinomials yet. And the first step is to factor the denominators to find the least common denominator. So between a 3 and a 12, 12 is the least common denominator. This, num this fraction is going to have to be built up to be a 12 so that they can have a common denominator. If the smallest number divides into the biggest number, then um, evenly, then that is part of, in this case, the LCD. 
So remember the last problem, we had a bunch of twos in one of the denominators, a few more twos in the other denominator? We took the four twos versus the three twos because that was the greatest number of times the twos occurred. I have to take the greatest number of x's in the least common denominator. So x squared is part of my least common denominator. So I need to build these two fractions up so that their denominators become 12x squared. So what I tend to ask my everybody, my students, is I say to, my, say to them, what do I need to do to this? What is missing from that denominator that I need to multiply by in order to make it a 12x squared? And that's a 4. And what I tend to do is I do this multiplication right away. I call that 20 over 12x squared. Because if I don't do that, I'm inclined to go and cross those off. And that's a silly thing. I hope you're laughing right now. Because if you just put it there, why would you cross it off? So be careful. And then this 7 over the 12x, needs its denominator needs to become a 12x squared. So I have to multiply that denominator by x in order to get that common denominator. So the numerator by x as well. And that will be called 7x over 12x squared. And I am now ready to add those. The numerators are not like terms, so I can just put them side by side. I would tend to put the 7x first and then the 20 over the common denominator of 12x squared. Again, I pause and I ask myself, can I reduce that at all? Um, can I factor anything out of that that I could reduce with downstairs? No. So I'm done. Let's do one more problem, I believe, and then we'll take a break. So let's go with a denominator that are, are binomials, because the first step in finding a least common denominator is to factor the denominators if it's possible. And these aren't factorable. So, you know, if, if you had um, two-thirds and seven-fifths that you wanted to add together, the common denominator is 15. They don't share a prime number. So this fraction would be multiplied by 5, and this fraction would be multiplied by the 3. Well, these denominators are just a plus 4 and a minus 6. So like this fraction here that had an LCD of 15, this one just has both of those, an a minus 6 and an a plus 4 in its LCD. So I then say to my gang, this denominator is missing which of those over there? It's missing the a plus 4. And what many of them will do is they'll just kind of put a little note here and they'll say, oh, you got to multiply that numerator by a plus 4 and call it 5a plus 20. Some of them just want to write that. They don't want to write it down here because what they might do by mistake is go and cross those off. But what I need you to understand is by multiplying the 5 by the a plus 4, that the denominator is now both binomials. So that I can add these in a minute. So right here then, this fraction 7 over a plus 4, which of those is it missing? It's missing that a minus 6. So they kind of just come over here and they go, oh, that's missing a minus 6. Now remember, we're multiplying top and bottom by a minus 6. But some of them just show that so that they're sure to call this 7a minus 42. Because that's what some people forget to do, is to distribute that to get um, a numerator so that these denominators will match so that you can now add these fractions. And so we'll go ahead and add the numerators only, which means add the like terms. So 5a and 7a adds to be 12a. And then this 20 and this minus 42 is a minus 22 over the common denominator of a minus 6 and a plus 4. I'm pretty proud of myself, but again, I have to pause and, and ask myself, if I took a 2 out of that numerator, would the resulting binomial reduce with anything downstairs? I don't think so. Because if I took a 2 out of here, I'd have a 6a minus 11. And neither of those are 6a minus 11. And there's no numerical factors of 2. So it's not necessary for me to do that. I will just leave my answer like this. 
You're welcome to do it. You can do it, but I don't need to because this isn't going to simplify. We're going to take a break and we'll come back and do some harder um, fractions that we'll add together where the denominators are a little bit more um, tiresome to work with.